seen that in various spheres of life, from the home to the workplace to national issues. People are very, very self-centered and have a huge sense of entitlement. Where people just focus on themselves and what they deserve to get. Even using the word deserve is not entirely accurate because when you have a sense of entitlement, you believe that you should get various things even without earning working them, for working for it. So you find that people generally like to free ride on public goods. As long as it's a public good and it's a necessity and we know that there's a community that needs it, then automatically for some reason they think that it should be free and it should not be paid for or they should not work to earn it. So that's where you see people knowing that electricity is available, but they won't pay for it. They would rather tap into the lines illegally. Water is available. Instead of paying for it, they would rather tap into the lines. I mean, that's even on a larger scale. Look at how we behave as individuals in smaller settings. There's a group of people who want to have a party. Someone feels like, yes, we deserve a party. So, okay, let's pay for it. You would find that if there were five people, two people will pay, but there will be five people to eat all the food at the party. They are thinking about themselves. They are thinking about their comfort. They are not thinking about the entire group and how the whole group can benefit from all put chipping in and enjoying that it needs to be enjoyed. And it's, it's very, for me, it's a big problem because we realize that people want to reap where they've not sown. And mm. once you start doing that, you develop a mentality of dependency where you depend on everybody else for the things that you believe you, you should, should do yourself. You should do yourself. Mm. When you start to think that people owe you in life, you don't work for yourself. Mm. And so you wake up in the morning. My mother and my father didn't pay my school fees, so I won't go to school. Mm -hmm. Then they pay your school fees, you go to school, and you don't have a job. The government hasn't given me a job, so I don't have a job. You get a job, your perks are not to a certain level. My boss isn't giving me perks to a certain level, so I won't work harder. It's, it's the little things. And you feel you deserve legitimately all of these things that you are not getting, and so you won't apply yourself because you're not getting them. Yes, because in your mind, you, are entitled, you should have it. You shouldn't work for it. And that's where the sense of entitlement mm. comes in. Mm. And mm. once you, delve, you allow yourself to enter that once you allow yourself to enter that space, you rob your own self of being able to work hard to earn things that you should have long term. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. Joan Saki with that, I, I, what she's saying, I see it's presenting itself in so many um, in so many other spheres, which I want us to explore in a moment. I'll be coming to you, Prof, in just a few seconds after the Joy Business Minute. Listen to this. This is the Joy Business Minute with me, Daryl. Barring any last-minute changes, the Finance Minister, Ken Ofoyata, is expected to present the media review and supplementary budget to Parliament on July 17. That date is subject to parliamentary approval. Government will be launching a common platform for mobile money transactions without the use of a point-of-sale device or the need for a mobile money transfer agent. This platform, when launched, will enhance the digital transformation agenda and drive economic growth. The role of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, one of which is to facilitate the export of non-traditional products is expected to change. The focus of government will now be to prioritize export of all marketable products. Scotch whiskey is among the products targeted by the U.S. for a possible range of new tariffs on imported goods. The U.S. has threatened to impose tariffs on European Union imports worth up to $4 billion, although it is not known when tariffs would be imposed. And those are the latest stories. Enjoy your day! And thanks for staying with us. This is still the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. So, Joanne Saki is with the Africa Center for Energy Policy, ASEP. She has been talking to us, Prof, about um, the sense of entitlements that we have. And sometimes, when we are even driving to work, we see people driving as if they deserve to get to work on time, as opposed to the rest of us who yeah. are sitting in traffic. Mm -hmm. Prof? You want me to contribute to what she yeah. said? I thought she, I was going to be allowed to have my own take. Oh, yes, but, no, but, but we want um, a quick comment on her. No before. problem. I, mm -hmm. I, I think um, over the weekend or in the lead up to last weekend, I um, wrote something, you know, on um, some of these um, practices. Um, yes, um, the kind of politics that sort of seeks to attract mm. attention to mm -hmm. oneself and make one feels so important. I believe the importance of politicians um, 
and for that we have politicians and those who are reposed with the mandate to mm. lead us should be judged and determined by how well they are able to serve the people who brought them to power okay. and not how they are able to install um, um, certain things in their cars that makes them feel so <laughs> important and I'm talking about um, using uh, the, the use of sirens you mm. know, these days and the flashing of the red and blue lights it ties in um, with what um, Joanne has said about. I mean everybody feels so important and so um, you need to flash red and blue lights but by law even the president has no right to fix sirens on his car that's why his car that he drives um, um, that he's um, chauffeured in has no siren but he's moved or he's escorted by a dispatch okay. okay so if a minister if a member of parliament for whatever reason would want to get to a destination or a meeting on time and if he feels he's late he is required to speak to the minister for interior so the interior can order a dispatch to be given him but now we are not doing that everybody party full soldiers party communicators everybody is fixing siren hmm. everybody <laughs> is flashing red and blue light in a manner that creates a sort of confusion on mm -hmm. the road mm -hmm. and they endanger lives of people pedestrian mm -hmm. and everybody yesterday a colleague of mine was telling me that um, so um, after my post he was driving and he saw another car a V driving towards him and he decided to pause in the middle of the road decided that well I'm not going to give you a way to go the guy rolled down and he was a very young um, Indian guy um, who attempted his glass and was just misbehaving with the sirens <laughs> and all that. The challenge, okay, the danger is that, you see, these things will tend to, quote and unquote, fool our security agencies. Somebody yeah. can kidnap, somebody can steal, yeah. somebody can do anything that runs afoul of our rules. If he's running away, all that he needs to do is to, f you know, install siren or flash red and blue lights. And the police sometimes actually salute people who drive these vehicles. I because they are afraid that the some, people are it connected. It is absolutely mm. unacceptable. And we, did, we don't need, we didn't bargain or settle for this kind of police that becomes G3 upon hearing um, um, sirens and all that. I followed someone like that from my hometown to Accra, all um, flashing red and blue lights and all the um, police checkpoints. He didn't stop. And at some of the checkpoints, the police were actually saluting him and all that. It's absolutely uh, needless, unacceptable. And for me, I've said that if the IGP and the uh, Minister for Interior can't act on this simple feat, they can't act to just prevent this from um, going on, then they have no business being in office because it's, it's a fertile ground for kidnappers. It's a fertile ground for criminals, you know, to thrive. All that you need to do is to install, and I went to fix a car bulb, you know, um, sometime, you know, about a month ago. Uh -huh. um, the guy fixed the bulb and then said, oh, say, um, I have a siren for you between 300 cities and 500 cities, if you like, I'll fix. He, I didn't say yes, but he placed one and demonstrated. I said, but I don't need it. I said, oh, I've given that to so many people, so many people who have sirens and all that. And that sense of entitlement, um, everybody is important. And we all don't, we don't, when I was coming here, I was in a queue. But I mm. saw a truck, truck driver with um, double hazard just overtaking all of us and driving on the shoulders of the road. Can't we check this? I mean. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's, it's very true. There's, a, there's something about having a sense of entitlement that places your comfort above everybody else's mm. um, issues. So once you are comfortable, you don't care about anybody else's discomfort. Mm. And most importantly, when solving that discomfort will deprive you of some of your comforts, a person with a sense of entitlement is not going to budge. And once a person also has a sense of entitlement, that translates in, into high dependency you realize that you would find a community that is waiting for government to save them or they have a very a savior mentality. Mm -hmm. So once they have that mentality, even when there is something in that vicinity that they can solve as a people using crowdfunding, they'll never do it because it's something that a savior should come and solve. Typical example, there was a time where we went to a program and one um, statistical organization had released a report about um, provision of electricity to some people in Sonyani. And it was a market. They had a structure and they needed 
more stable electricity and solar was an option. Now we found that that those who represented that commun community in the setter in the setting that we were in kept saying and we would like to have government come and then install solar for us because we know that solar is good and and I was sitting there asking myself you probably need a few solar panels. It will cost you quite a number of thousands, I know. But how many of you are in that building? How many of you can contribute to this? Combine your powers. You would be able to install your own solar power because you own the space. You own the shops. They are your businesses. If you are able to think beyond yourself as an individual then, and think of the collective group, you will be able to install something like mm. that and all of you would benefit. Your businesses will have electricity 24-7, cheap electricity for that matter. You can increase your profits. You can grow your businesses. That kind of thinking would take you further as far as business is concerned. But no, they are willing to wait it out for as long as government is able to finally think that that is a priority. How long would that take you? But think about it. When there's a funeral or there's a wedding, you and immediately we, contribute even exactly, more money. Exactly. Exactly. So then you ask yourself, when it makes them look good as individuals, you would find the money. But if it's something that we need to use as a group, it's never going to happen. For this particular category, frankly, some would argue that we, we enter a social contract with government and so we expect them to deliver on some, on some well, amenities. I mean, it's called the tragedy of the commons phenomenon. I mean, clearly, what belongs to you, you tend to take care of. What belongs to others tend to fall into disrepair. Mm -hmm. If there's a path uh, in front of your home, you probably are interested in taking care of it. But if the path line, the pathway is in a bush somewhere, nobody would uh, make sure that it's, it's, it's cleared, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I can understand how the politics has elevated the sense of entitlement. Exactly. Because in the first place, the politician who has nothing quantifiable to offer but has uh, all sort of freebies to throw, throw around can easily induce this sense of entitlement. But I think it's also a reflection of, of our mm -hmm. own self. And I don't think I'm going to take myself out of it as well. I think mm. what Joan and uh, Prof are actually saying is that it's things that we've nurtured that we found it difficult to stop. And okay. just that they found expressions because pol the politician has also baited us, really. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. But you see it everywhere. I mean, look, you give a, s uh, a task to someone or you give employment to people. Uh, the moment the terms of employment needs to change because you need to adapt to certain mm -hmm. situations, then all hell breaks loose. In my experience, I've, I've seen quite a number of that. We, not just if you money, but if other persons who I know have businesses as well. And uh, as typical of the, the, not necessarily the human mind or human uh, the humans, but I think in Ghana, it's, it's, there's an appreciable level of this, which is quite disingenuous as well. Hmm. The moment you change the terms, or you, you, ask, you seek to change the terms for efficiency, then people raise all kinds of questions. And the same thing with our politicians. The moment you ask them, oh, yeah, I want to do 600 drones of flight, including carrying, uh, what's it called, o ORS. Yeah. When ORS is just salt and water. Um, <laughs> they say, hey, you are, you are against saving lives. I said, yeah, but you could, lives could be saved by giving first aid. The first aid is what? 113 people ate some bad food, and all of a sudden... They were running. The first aid is salt and water. That's basically ORS. Mm, mm, mm. So the fact that the drone, which we've paid so much money for, is flying ORS, eh, 30 or 40 kilometers further from uh, the district <laughs> <laughs> hospital, <laughs> the moment you start having this conversation, the next thing the, the person who is interested says, ah, you look at them. They are against drones. But that's not the question. We are just saying that, look, you could have used, don't, don't excuse your, uh, what is it called, the lack of efficiency on, 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 the, on the pedestal of something that may have happened mm. uh, on, on the spur of the moment. You see it everywhere. You question officialdom. The next question they ask you is, why are you so opposed to these things? But you see, the moment you question, you're actually suggesting that you are, you are providing solutions. You could have done it in another way. So this sense of entitlement permeates through our and uh, I mean the entirety of our society. Mm. Uh, you see that it's Zenit when the politician yeah. feels that, look, 
I'm here because I want power. It's not because of what you are saying. And then I'm going come. to do what I have to do. Our government has Which come. I suspect <laughs> would dovetail into the other conversations about some of the take, my take. Uh-huh. I think, look, following from the previous conversation we had about parliament, right? Uh-huh. And the need not to create a um, series of authorities or fiefdoms as if we are spreading uh-huh. confetti or toughest everywhere. <laughs> you know, I ask myself, Look, we keep saying that we want to devolve power. It is a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. But devolving power to people for the sake of electing them may not be enough. And Professor Jampo knows what I'm talking about. I'm sure Joanne uh, understands this as well. What is our problem in this country? Is the fact that the resources are not possibly, they are inequitably shared. Mm -hmm. That's That's the point. So we need hospitals, you need clinics, you need uh, whatever. We've created for ourselves an, a system where we think we can share rents um, effectively, and that's the District Assembly's Common Fund. But I ask myself, with the additional creation of authorities, be them uh, regions or districts, the question is, do these things solve the resource uh, inequity problem? See, when Kritikrachi was carved out, before Kritikrachi was carved out of uh, what's it called, the Volta region to create OT. Mm-hmm. There was a district assembly common fund. And if we did the per capita analysis, each Kritikrachian is supposed to get maybe five cities. Mm-hmm. As we sit, do you think that by the mere creation of a region in which Kritikrachi is not part of OT, the district assembly's common fund per head has shot up to 10 cities? It has not. Mm. So there are questions about some of the decisions we take in terms of, I mean, as we try to bring governance to the doorstep for people. I suggest that it is not efficient. Sometimes it's not thought through. I thought the commission that did the work of this uh, regional creation of regions did a shoddy job. They only relied on historical trends. A group of people felt discontented, then came and said, ah, we, you know, since history we've been trying to we, we've been trying to be part of a separate entity and they would give it. There was no shred of any serious analysis on the effectiveness of these areas in terms of the economic potential that should have added to the co- discourse. Mm. I mean, I've traveled to some parts of this country. I remember the front planes. I went to see a planning officer and I asked him, your DC claims that the only market, the only IGF you have, 80% of your IGF comes from a market called my microbial. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a problem, because at the time that we visited, I visited, my microbial was now going to be another, in a new district because of, so, uh, because districts are, uh, so what's it called, the existing district was going to be divided up into two, Yeah. right? And the DC is, the DC was going to lose my microbial to the other district. Mm-hmm. You know what the DC's, DC's plan was, his development plan, was to scheme to become DC of the next of the new district. New district, which has my microbial. Which has my microbial in Then there. I asked the planner, so what are you doing? You have potential in this area. Front Plains is full of, you know, uh, it's, it's an ecosystem which I think could be exploited for a lot of things, ecotourism and what have you. He said, well, my brother, I'm just here. All I do is to be an armchair, armchair planner. It's the same mentality that went into the creation of these regions. Armchair type of thinking. And I shudder to think that the, 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 the developmental gaps we want to fill are only being appropriated by a sheer sense of uh, some sort of identity, mm. but not necessarily mm. based on any economic mm. value. Mm. And I worry that these things will never help us. What people need are nurses, doctors, um, what's it called, uh, schools, hospitals. It is not the creation of you know, all these authorities that necessarily will bring development. So for you, the problem is our lack of prioritization. Well, lack of prioritization is, is just uh, maybe the umbrella terminology. Mm. But if you're asking for specifics, yeah. because you need to make give specifics to 
of course to point to, to make the of course point. i i just wanted to be able to understand it from that perspective because of well exactly for for the sake the of point. moving yes but so it's 19 minutes past nine and the reason why i mentioned that is that we have separated our um, peeves into two big categories so franklin brings up this creation of regions and the creation of new authorities in creation of new bureaucracies which falls under are we really getting it right are we really getting our priorities right and then there's also on the other leg uh, Prof. Jampo talking about our sense of entitlement, which translates into what you see when you're driving, driving to work. People fitting sirens into their cars and driving here. Joanne has given us a myriad of examples of how it shows from when we are contributing to a party to when people are um, asking for solar uh, power in the market in which they work and they make their money. It's 20 minutes past nine. What we'll do when we come back is that we'll try and take these issues and see how we can fashion the solutions for ourselves. I'm saying this because... Um, I have a texter here, MFA says, Danny, if we all want to wait on government to fix our problems, it's going to take so long and we can take up our issues on our own. We have a building around Danfa and we are about eight tenants, no water, no lights, no roads. We took it upon ourselves to do all these by contributing and we understand that that's where we live, government or no government. Interesting sense there. That in itself could be dangerous, but we'll see if the solutions are beyond us when we come back. Stay with us. At AfroDan, we believe that many of the problems people have with their health is as a result of the way they sit. In other words, your chair can kill you. Here's Dr. Marcus Mann of the Chiropractic and Wellness Center. What you have to remember is that the spine is the lifeline to your body. And posture is the window to that spine. Now, posture is affected by your daily activities and habits like sitting. That's why at the Chiropractic and Wellness Centers, we recommend what I believe to be the best chairs available for preventing not only subluxations, but also other health problems that you may not be aware of, and that's Rabani and Mobilex chairs. Unfortunately, on a daily basis, I have to correct the effects of this poor sitting habit in our business men and business women. Always remember, optimal spine equals optimum health. So, for the sake of your health, buy Robami or Mobilex chairs from Afrodan. We are on the first floor of the Swansea Shopping Arcade. Telephone 663-085. Daddy, I bet you enjoyed your trip abroad. Oh, yes. It was worth every peso. And the experience was breathtaking. The beautiful environment, the culture, and the food. Oh, my. Until I got Terribly sick. <laughs> Perhaps from eating too many new dishes. <laughs> but you know, thanks to my Glyco travel insurance policy, all my medical bills were paid for the three days that I was on admission. Really? Glyco travel insurance policy? Yes, my dear. Glyco travel insurance is the best. Look, it covers medical and emergency services, personal assistance services, emergency return home, personal liability such as legal defense fee, loss of baggage, personal accidents, trip cancellation, or even delayed departure. And even these are the once I remember off my head. <laughs> yes, Glyco Travel Insurance has a worldwide cover and widely accepted by embassies, both Shenzhen and non Shenzhen. Visit any of our Glyco offices nationwide or call 020-422-113 or 055-5305-547 for ready assistance from our experienced support team. Be safe, travel protected, and have a peace of mind. Glyco, we cushion you for life. Oh, Jam, why you make quiet like that? Oh, Charlie, I'll go do some POP, give somebody where the cornices not fine, crap. I always they tell you, see, for decorative roses and cornices, the solution be interface. Them have different imported cornices and roses in different designs and shapes. Installing them be so easy, and it go give your customer the finishing he wants. Oh, Jam, take me go interface right now before I lose this customer. Interface Limited is the leading supplier and installer of finishing input materials for the building and construction industry in Ghana. Call us on 02 2749999999 or visit our website at www.interfacelimited.com the soccer feeling and win big with a NASCO Soccer Fever promotion with so much more excitement on our reduced prices and gifts. From as low as 449 Ghana cities, you are assured of watching all the live action, the goals and the tackles on NASCO TVs. Soccer your eyes away with our 43-inch TV at 1,299 Ghana cities and get a free phone. You can also win a smartphone and a free Bluetooth speaker when you buy any 55 to 65-inch TV. Starting from 699 Ghana cities, you get a double-door fridge with a free blender and a free kettle when you you buy our chest freezer. Ish. 
Nasco Soccer Fever be a day. Visit any of our showrooms or authorized resellers now. It's the Nasco Soccer Fever promotion. Nasco, bring home happiness. Feed your kids' imagination with more variety from DSTV this holiday. Just because there's no school, it doesn't mean the fun and learning have to stop. That's why DSTV has the largest variety of children's entertainment and educational shows in Africa. Help them learn valuable life lessons with the latest episodes of Pinkalicious and Peterific, Super Strikers, Coop and Cami Ask the World, and many more. Get and stay connected to DSTV and find more ways to feed their imagination. Joy FM has continued the annual tradition of the Beauty and Bridal Fair, an exhibition filled with everything you need to make your wedding a success. This year will be no different. Join us at the Accra International Conference Center from Thursday, July 11 to Sunday, July 14, 2019 for all wedding-related goods and services, decor, dresses, honeymoon packages, and everything in between. Be part of the marriage seminar and the fashion show on July 14 at exactly 2 p.m. For more information, please call Contact 024-647-7783 or 054-010-6466. This Joy Beauty and Bridal Fair is brought to you by Joy 99.7 FM and sponsored by Ruby's Bridal. 925 Jewelers, creating treasures for a lifetime. Angels Beauty Supplies, it's all about looks. Yomi Yogurt, always different, truly different. GT Bank, wouldn't you rather bank with us? Joy Beauty and Bridal Fair, where your beauty comes alive and you walk down the aisle, big inks. Coffee in your cup and joy on the set. The Super Morning Show. Seven minutes past nine here on the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. Put our differences aside and try to work together. Does it annoy you when people are in traffic with you and decide to turn on their sirens and go on as if no one else is in a hurry? Do you think Ghanaians behave like they are too entitled? It's like everything someone should do is for you. Must demand accountability. And what do you really make they said of the way our governance is structured? Look at how we've had to create new districts and new regions. So we've been borrowing from the beginning in gun. when basic needs of the people are not being addressed isn't it bonkers how corruption is tearing apart those are some of the questions that we have raised this morning on the super morning show with my guests franklin kojo joan saki and professor bransford jampo i'm gonna go back to them so that we find out if we can fashion some solutions among ourselves now. but before i do that education is one thing barclays apsa group limited never compromises on that's why apsa has invested millions of dollars to educate thousands of students all over africa including ghana in 2017 alone we repaired over 200,000 students for the workplace through our ready to work program Welcome to APSA Group Limited. APSA, proudly serving you in Ghana Stand up. as Barclays. Now, the journey of a thousand smiles began 10 years ago, and to celebrate this, MTN is giving away 10 brand new Hyundai cars in the MTN Momo at 10 promo, including the all new 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe as a grand prize. You could also win other exciting prizes like the Samsung Smart TVs, up to 3,000 Ghana cities in e cash every month and so much more. Just keep using your MTN Momo for more, uh, for your everyday transactions to build points and to win big. 
Um, remember, promo winners would only be called with 0244 300,000. 0244 300,000. Again, winners will not be contacted through text messages nor be asked to pay any money to redeem their prizes. Dial star 120 has to check your point. Terms and conditions apply. Just Momo it. We did for you everywhere you go. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to stay. Text messages are brought to you by Afro Daniel Back must last you a lifetime and Glyco Critical Illness Plan G SIP. Glyco, we cushion you for life. Innocent, a critic of the system for what it is and should have been. It should have been the paradise for the world to envy. But it's hard. So let me begin with Prof. Um, we'll go to other issues very shortly, but then in, in, in a nutshell, this issue of people driving down the road with their sirens and what have you, what do we do? What are the solutions? Well, I think um, we've highlighted the dangers, mm -hmm. um, the threats they pose to our security mm -hmm. um, and all that. And I think that the powers that be mm. uh, must um, rethink mm -hmm. their own docile approach to some of these things. A police officer shouldn't shiver when mm -hmm. he sees somebody just blowing a siren. You should be able to question. You should be able to stop and ask if it's not an ambulance, if it is not a fire service vehicle, if it's not a police um, dispatch. You should be able to question whoever is doing that. Otherwise, tomorrow, if you are flashing your red and blue light, and because it is also cheaper for me to also, you know, inst um, install one in my car, I'm also doing the same. She's doing the same. Uh, frankly, is doing that. I mean, who will stop? We will all be flashing red and blue lights, and mm. it will be chaotic. And so I, I think... Um, like I said, powers that be who are unable to fix this simple problem do not are not worth their sort to remain in power. Now, as citizens, if we see that this, this is going on and the police are not being proactive in dealing with it, what are the options well, available to us? this is what us? I've done. And uh, like I said, a colleague told me he did the same. I mean, when I see you driving you know, towards me and it's not an ambulance and it's not a car that, in my opinion, <coughs> warrants to be flashing those... Um, light and all that i stop in the middle of the road let them let them run over me and you stop in the middle of the road they stop and then they themselves would uh, do are forced the right to thing. Um, do the right thing and mm. all that and like i said foreigners are now coming into our countries and they know how lax our system is and so they are doing same and all that and i think it is something that if the law enforcement you know, agencies wouldn't be competent enough to handle. I think the citizens are empowered by the constitution to do the same. Um, let us ensure, let us say no to needless nuisance of sounding sirens and all that. And let the citizens be very much aware of this. And mm. if, if, if the police will not do it, I mean, you have every right to say that I'm not moving. Your car is not an ambulance. Which is something that Franklin was telling me that <laughs> <laughs> you are sometimes forced to do. Oh, yes. I mean, I watch the number plate. If it is not the police higher up, higher up uh, the hierarchy, one GP123 one, or 4, um, I really don't. And uh, I just stay in. If it's not an no, ambulance, they are, they I stay in. There are decent police officers who, um, who, who drive, you know, even in queues. Yeah, they do the right thing. Yeah. So why not? So I stay in, and then um, if the person manages to, you know, uh, uh, manages to get close to me, uh, I lower my glass and we all look at each other. We both look at each other. <laughs> and then I, you could think that he probably wants to swear. But the face, uh, you know, uh, wafts him off. <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't know you have such an intimidating face, right? Well, I <laughs> probably wouldn't. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, I know that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Okay. One tried to do the middle finger and uh, I think he lowered it. <laughs> when it's on my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Daniel, the GRA boss is the number one culprit. Every morning Ooh. he flashes his light and siren. Either, is it, which car is it? Is this the GRA boss himself? I, I, I wish you could have the, um, the details of that. Uh, 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 someone just wow. sent us. Is it the one with CD? Uh, GRA CD? Uh, yeah, that's, that's the, the if you can I give must, the I must have seen it about three times myself. Uh, You've seen a GRA vehicle? Yeah, I think this, the GRA CD. Um, I don't know if that's what the person means. But I, I suspect that work they early, probably need to get to work early. to the early. minister for interior. I mean, if it's, a CD, if it's the CD, then obviously there must be some reasons why okay. they need to get to work that day. Okay. Yeah, but it has, to be a, it, it has to be something that we need to get the details of. Okay, I'm getting some more details of that. Um, you, someone just sent me a picture of... Um, okay, this one says it's a four-wheel drive with GRE number plates. Mm -hmm. And 
It drives around um, Spintex Road or on Tishi, the Spintex Road or the uh, Tishi Accra Road. Wow. So every morning on the Spintex Road or the Tishi mm-hmm. Accra Road. Uh, it's a four-wheel drive with GRA number, please. We are getting more details <laughs> of that. Okay. So citizens must not condone no. when some of these things are yeah. happening. Joan. Yes. So for me, I like to look at it from a more, um, from a lower level. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when we talk about these things in a national light, people tend to feel as if they are disconnected from it, that mm-hmm. it's the big people's problem. But then it all boils down to having a sense of entitlement. When you go to the car wash, the fee is seven cities. But he'll tell you that, oh, company fee no your seven cities, media no your ten cities, into three cities no your media. And I'm like, my guy, why? Because he believes he's entitled to a tip before he even why works well. The restaurant the same thing. If it's left with five, um, five cities, they, they pretend they've forgotten. Yes. So yeah. now, my, my, my problem. <laughs> That, that, me, that, that like may be a marketing uh, uh, strategy. It's as happening to me illegally. <laughs> yes, I don't think it's very legal. Legal. <laughs> uh, I go thanks to this. Uh, when <laughs> yes, it has I would think to it's better to stop at saying, oh, company, company is five cities. Then you leave it there. Mm-hmm. I mean, in my spirit, that's what they do. Then they leave it there. Uh, obviously hoping that you, you will add <laughs> something. But, but in this this daring. <laughs> For me, it's, uh, there's a certain car wash that I've stopped going to because all the boys were doing that. And wow. I think to solve something like that, I always call them out on it. You can't do that. Mm. I would give you a tip when I feel you have worked well. Yeah. So mm. I always have the exact amount of change on me. The exact amount. If I don't feel like you've worked hard enough for more, I won't give Joanne. because tips, see, tips are mandatory. In some re- that, that is why I don't live that, in those regions. That, that, that is that is no. But you <laughs> see, <laughs> that <was> in <laughs> Washington. No. I kept going to a Thai restaurant, which was close to my uh-huh. hotel, because I like the food. Uh-huh. And um, I didn't know this tip culture, mm. so I went there three times. The third time, the Thai man came to me and said, "There's actually tip." <laughs> said, but you should have told me I didn't know. Yes, but frankly, you see, from that perspective, you know, there's a culture around yeah, it. There's yeah, a yeah. there's but, a reason they good. live on the yeah. tips. But this is where you have been employed in a business that gives you a salary mm. that says that work for this number of hours and you will be paid so much. You are dealing with customers. Your contract is not with the customer. Your contract That's is true. with your boss. Your customer is not supposed to pay you extra beyond what you are entitled to at the end of the month as your salary. But because we have accepted it as a people, it's become a culture. And so once you don't do it, then your work be- gets pushed into yeah. the okay. back. I think this was rude, actually, you know? the way it was asked from you. The person yeah. who said yeah. that I company mean, DNA he's, he's uh, oh, and he said it in such, oh, he's been, he, he <laughs> laughed about it and he was, I thought, I thought he was joking. Then I realized he was, he was serious. serious. But you see, and you called it, him out. Of course, but you see, that is how we deal with this sense of entitlement. Mm. Why should you be a group of friends and there's always one person free riding and you allow it to go on forever? You have to be able to call out these little <laughs> attitudes because they, they are, these are the people who grow up to sit in government vehicles to turn on sirens. Well, it, is, it, is, it is a very deep-seated um, pra- um, practice. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you are talking about you know, those you know, at the, at the um, uh, washing uh, car washing base. I mean, yeah. I don't know whether you've deal, uh, we've dealt with a government ministry department or agency before. Mm. You enter into an agreement mm-hmm. or you want them to do something for you. Yes. And you are, you, for some yes. reason, I mean, you have ah, applied, the control, for, the applied for some funding and the funding is being given to you yes. and other. The one working on... Sometimes <laughs> you are very lucky if the person is candid to tell you that, look, um, find something for yes, me. Yes, push the Otherwise, envelope. Otherwise, they are lackadaisical. I mean, exactly. I, had, I had an experience like that. The person called me, ah, but prof, why do you think I was pushing the checks like that for you? I mean, you didn't give me anything. Next, the next tranche, I'm going to be like a I said, wow. And I asked around, I said, oh, but that is a practice. And if you see, see people holding, carrying people's checks and moving them from one signing point to the other, and all, it means they have a sense of entitlement. They feel mm-hmm. that you must give them something. Exactly. But you see, they learn this thing from somewhere. So you have to nip it in the bud. You don't expect that when they've learned it over their childhood and teenage years and as young adults, they will sit in government offices and understand why they shouldn't be entitled to the extra tip to push your envelope. Remember Amu Juleto's money galore? 
uh, uh, the book where <laughs> the man becomes a politician as soon as he becomes a politician and goes to visit his father his father asks him how would you give me money yeah. <laughs> exactly biggest on strike what's the name of that title biggest strike biggest strike yeah biggest strike biggest strike yeah always anyway okay so we we are in conflict now because we have we have to begin to wrap up this conversation uh, this segment there's prof jampo who needs to be given his time and there's yes. franklin who hasn't finished with his points so uh can we vote <laughs> there's Anne who needs to say something else as well you said and there's Anne who has to i think you have to host us yeah. another time one-on-one -on -one. i think and so that we can because i have serious <laughs> governance issues that i really want to talk about okay so, so but, no, but if i begin if i begin to talk about we won't, we won't finish okay so prof Let's let's find a time for the two of us. Yes, just the two. I of don't us. have a problem. I want to. One I'll, I'll, I'll look for the so many things, for so many governance deficits. You know that okay. we'll have to highlight for the attention okay. of the public and mm -hmm. possibly for the redress of of the politician. And um, we we have limited time, and so I, maybe we may have to wrap up on these issues. That okay, we okay, because we we have raised we have raised very in, important issues this morning already, and so we'll use the final minutes that we have uh, to just take final words on yes. what we've discussed so far. And let me begin with you, Prof. Oh, I, I think um, my salient issue um, with respect to our discussion this morning has been the politics of self-importance mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and the case of sirens and the flashing of blue and red lights. Mm. Um, my issue, my beef is that um, people who are required or vehicles that are required to be using these gadgets, we respect them, they should use. The president <laughs> is required to be escorted, you know, mm. and wherever he's going by a police dispatch. We, we, citizens and citizens respect that mm -hmm. but ministers are not supposed to do that okay members of parliament are not supposed to do okay. that party functionaries party full soldiers party communicators see i know a party chairman whose personal assistant when he was um she was attending a wedding a private wedding mm -hmm. was using siren a private wedding yes a private wedding wow. using siren and i wow. asked her oh, but i'm in a hurry and all that. I mean, That's when you say you are buying our bar, our government has come and they are chopping power. I think the danger is you see, sometimes some ignorantly, some are so ignorant to the point that even when they are driving to the malls, mm -hmm. shopping malls, mm -hmm. they are flashing red and, and blue lights. The challenge is that you may have a suicide bomber who may be flashing red and blue lights mm. entering a mall. Mm. Everybody salutes him. He gets there. He blows, he blows himself and everybody up. Mm -hmm. You may have a kidnapper running away with somebody's daughter. Okay, When he gets to the checkpoint, the police would actually be saluting um, the wow. person. I, I think, once again, we're making a passionate call on the powers that be, mm. particularly the IGP and the Minister <coughs> for Interior that they should rethink, mm. you know, um, this sirens and, and ensure that only those who are by law mandated to be sounding sirens do so. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, this time we'll break protocol and make it ladies last. Yes. So, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think uh, a lot has been said about this sense of entitlement, but I just want to say something concerning the state of accounts. Okay. And as I sit here and the conversations about our debt, um, no matter the quantum involved, it's a matter that we need to discuss uh, because it shows that we are either not doing, moving forward uh, in the way that we should, but also has implications on our budgeting processes as well. As the budget cycle is about uh, happening, it is important that to, to stem the whole cycle of, you know, the mourning and, the, well, the wailing, of funds that have been dissipated and not used appropriately, it is important to have interested parties, Joanne, Prof, you, everybody else who is mm -hmm. interested in understanding how the budget cycle works, to actually have meetings with ministries before they present their budget to the finance minister. Because yeah. the finance minister can, can his finance ministry do not have the expensive staff to be able to vet every figure. Okay. So the problem will just rush through. But we can stem the tide of these endless annual rituals of uh, the Auditor General's report mm -hmm. coming out with mm -hmm. all kinds of infractions. 
when we, those who understand some of these uh, budget processes, sit with these ministries and say, well, listen, let's understand what you actually want to put into this budget before they get passed onto the finance ministry. That way, you stem the tide of these endless procurement shenanigans, because that's what hmm. really uh, ends up being yeah. official corruption. The grand corruption that and we're so, talking about. Like we say, um, fighting waste and corruption begins with understanding what the budget cycle looks like. When we do that, we can then prevent these wailing and these post facto uh, rationalization okay. of what must have been done and what shouldn't okay. have been done. Mm. Then we can even question the creation of regions, mm. the, the and all these decisions, all these that, decisions are that are uh, coming properly. up as well, in spite of the fact that they may have been somebody else's uh, campaign dream, dream. Yeah. Right, thank you very much, Franklin. And finally, before we go to, because we are going to Egypt in just a moment to speak with Benedict Owusu. Uh, he's uh, stationed in Ismailia, but we'll take uh, Joanne's final words. Okay, so my final words are that we need to be able to assess ourselves objectively and be very honest with ourselves as far as having a sense of entitlement is concerned. If we are not able to do that, we create an environment where mm. we become very dependent on a savior that may not exist. Okay. And to be able to step out of that, we should be honest with ourselves, like I've already said, and then take a step further and work hard as individuals, mm. okay? Once you're able to do that, you're able to lift yourself out of your own rot and expand your horizon. Go beyond what you are used to experiencing, and then you'll be able to also contribute to your society. Mm. We need to be able mm. to call out the people who have high senses of entitlement, entitlement yeah. so that we'll be able to correct the, that which is wrong because it has a, it, the ripple effect of it is very wide. Shout out to think what kind of world our kids will live in <laughs> if these things are not um, fixed. Thank you very much, Prof. France, for Jampo, especially you, Prof. And uh, Franklin I, Kujo. Just one last point um, about the journalist. And I think it's, it's unfortunate <laughs> that the journalists had to go through what they went through the state should absolve itself of these charges and then uh, let journalists be work in peace. Well, I think the National Security has issued a statement. They um, deny the they torture. Deny it, but I think we have to hear from the journalist. Yeah. Um, yes, we will. We will. Um, okay, so we'll do a quick stop in Egypt and then we deal with a couple of other uh, of these other issues. The show is far from over. It's 14 minutes till we finish. About... Um, Academic freedom and, and what, what we have we, we, probably, we, 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 we have to move on immediately. Benedict is on the line. Good morning, Benedict. How's Egypt now? Hi, Daniel. Good morning. Uh, I'm good. I hope you're good. Yes, we are fine. Are the boys ready for tonight? Of course. I mean, they have to be ready, even if they are not, because uh, the, the only thing uh, going in tonight's game uh, on their minds is that they have to get a good result, and a good result means getting the win. Uh, to ensure they meet the next stage of the competition. You know, a draw can also take us, depending on the result, uh, between Benin and Cameroon. But I'm not sure we'd want to, you know, uh, put our hopes uh, on Cameroon to beat uh, Benin uh, for us to meet the next stage. The most important thing for us to do is to get a win. And then when we get a win, then we just will focus on uh, our next uh, game. That mm. will be in the round mm. of 16. But what's the mood in camp? The, the guys, as always, are very much ready. And I think the vibe, uh, around this time, it's different from uh, when we're going to play against Benin and Cameroon. At this point, they know very well that uh, a win is non-negotiable. They have to get that. Uh, so, uh, in terms of the vibe, in terms of everything that they are doing, the preparation, their mindset is totally different uh, from that that they took to the game against okay. Benin and Cameroon. They know very well that this is something they have to do. And in doing that, they have to be in good mood, good spirit. And as we've always seen of them, this one is, is really going to be Amazing, and I, mm. I can promise of a very good performance from the team. Right. Um, Benedict, have you spoken to any of the players, any of the officials? What have they been saying? Well, Coach Christian Pierre yesterday was at a pre-match uh, conference. He talked about uh, Asamoajan, his influence in the last game against Cameroon, and uh, possibly maybe Asamoajan will get a chance to play a larger part of the game today, as well as uh, Kwabno, who spoke about Christian Achu, who uh, is, is just unfortunate that at this point it looks like it. Afghan campaign is over because of the injury sustained mm. uh, in our game against Cameroon. But uh, the Jonathan Mensa would have to pass a lit fitness test uh, to check uh, his availability for selection. You know, Kasim Nuhu 
uh, picked up a yellow card in the last game and due yeah. to yellow card circulation, he will not be available uh, for this game. And if Jonathan Mensa is not going to be in, then it means for the very first time we're going to have a centre back up, mm. uh, Joseph Edu and John Boy, uh, which you know will be new to this tournament because in the last one when John Boy wasn't around, we had Kasim Dung and Jonathan Mensa. So if uh, Jonathan is unable to pass the late fitness test, well, what it means is that we're going to rely on John Boy and Kasim uh, uh, Joseph. And of course, all these guys are very much ready. As a mm. tells me that, you know what, I mean, yeah, for some of them, they feel this uh, possibly could be the last time they are playing in the Afghan and they wouldn't want to bow out uh, okay. like this. Of course, they would want to get to a level where it would be much appreciable right. in the tournament for Ghana. So uh, they feel that they have to go into this game and possibly maybe after playing those two matches in Ismailia where they feel, you know, to get wins. Mm-hmm. They, they think that Suez possibly could be the ground where they will start winning in this year's competition. Thank you very much, Benedict Ousu, for joining us from Ismailia in Egypt. Fingers crossed. Uh, we are saying our prayers for the Black Stars tonight. So live on the Super Morning Show. This is the shortest ad break I've ever taken since I came on the show. Trust me. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Nothing stops our desire to win. From being several goals down to winning the game. From the tackles, the dribbles, even the Sulia before the winning goal. <laughs> Nothing stops our drive. The Ghanaian game is alive. It's in all of us. The Total Afcon 2019. We were made for this. Let nothing stop your passion. Keep paying with your Visa card. Or scan to pay with Visa. Ask your bank for a Visa card today. Visa, everywhere you want to be.
Point Chua Thompson and others for the Business Model Innovation Workshop on Tuesday, July 9 at the Tomrick Hotel, East Lagon.